Hey, what's going on? This is Thomas Galdenzi with Combat Sports Coverage. I'm here interviewing Justin Ledette over his upcoming UFC fight, August 6, 2016, at the Salt Lake City in Utah. So, Justin, how did this huge opportunity come to fight for the UFC? Man, uh, I, don't, I don't really know, actually, myself. Uh, I've been in talks for a long time with uh, Tucker Punch Entertainment. Uh, they've been contacting me probably since about 2012, 2011. Uh, but uh, it just kind of came out of nowhere. One minute I was complaining that I couldn't get a fight, and then the next morning I woke up and they gave me this opportunity. So we, so we of course, took it. Man, that's awesome. Uh, who who gave you like who gave you the call? Was it your uh, manager, or was it like the UFC directly called you, or how did that happen? Uh, my manager called me. I guess uh, Sucker Punch talked with the UFC, and then you and then Sucker Punch called my management, and my management called me. Wow, that's awesome. How how was that feeling for you? Like when you found out, like you're like, man, I'm gonna be fighting for the UFC August six. Like, what was how was that feeling? Like, what was going through your head? Nice. So, how do you feel heading into this fight with your opponent? He's he's a nine and one record. His name is Chase Sherman. Uh, do you know much about him, or no? Not you're not much into watching tape. Uh, I'm not much into watching tape. Uh, my trainers have they told me a little bit about him. I think I saw like one fight. Uh, I read a couple articles about the fight. I know he trains out of Alan Belcher's uh, camp over in Mississippi, so I know uh, he's a good kickboxer and. Uh, that's all it really I need to know whether he's a stand up or a ground fighter. I feel like uh if he's a stand up fighter then, you know, that's cool. We'll get it done on the feet. If he's a ground fighter then, you know, I'm gonna work it back to to my advantage. So uh I doubt I'll watch much tape on him. <laughs> nice. And so how do you see this fight playing out? Do you see yourself winning by KO, a TKO, a submission, or do you just see you beating him up for three rounds? Uh, shoot, honestly, man, I hope we beat each other up for three rounds, man. That's what I like, man. Uh, I'm tired of these guys skating out of these fights with no injuries, man. I mean, if we could beat each other up for three rounds, that would be, that would be the, my best way of going out, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what I, that's what I want to see. Trying to get that uh, 50 extra K for fight of the night? Uh, well, you know, I, I want to see where his heart is, you know. Nice. I, I feel like most of these guys, man, they, they ain't got no heart, you know what I'm saying? Like, I tell people, you need to be able to take an ass-whooping as good as you can give one. Mm -hmm. Most of these motherfuckers, they can't, you know, they can't take an ass-whooping. Me, on the other hand, I can take my ass-whooping shoot. That's when the fight actually starts getting good in my eyes is when I start taking an ass-whooping. That makes me even try harder, so that's what I'm hoping for. So you kind of have like that uh, Forrest, Forrest Griffin mentality where it's like, uh, you know, the, the fight really doesn't get started until you get hit once or twice good? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. That's awesome. And then so when did you start training for this camp? Like when did you get the news that, you know, that you're going to be, t you have this fight coming up? Uh, shoot, when was it? I think last Thursday. I, I, honestly, I kind of just woke up and saw the stuff on Facebook just like everybody else and was like, is this even real, you know, kind of thing. Oh, wow. But, like, like, for me, you know, I just I just stay in shape in general. I really ain't got, you know, I really don't got many friends. I ain't got hobbies, you know. This is kind of my life, you know. I train every day, regardless if it's fight camp or, you know, it's, it's Christmas break. It don't matter. That's great. And um, where do you train out of and who do you train with? Uh, I train with a lot of uh, different people. I train out of uh, Submission Boxing Academy in Perryland with uh, Frank Adame, Gary Pena. I train down at uh, American Combat System with Drew Radicek. I train at uh, Gracie Bar uh, with uh, Trocolino. So those are definitely my, my main three. And then I also travel a lot to get my sparring and whatnot. That's awesome. So yeah, so you're, I'm guessing you're a believer in you know cross-training, not just training at one gym? Uh, I mean, if I could train at one gym, I, I, I would. It's just that, you know, not, not everybody, you know, because I go to a jiu-jitsu gym because those guys are good at jiu-jitsu, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they are, I mean, they're just going to have a more grasp on jiu-jitsu. So you're, that's where you're going to find the best jiu-jitsu players. Then at the boxing gym, that's where you're going to find the best strikers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then I put it all together at the MMA gym. So... You got to travel a little bit, cross train with these guys, 
just to get the best of both worlds, and then you got to put it together yourself in the end. I agree with that, definitely. I think that's a smart choice. And then also, so a lot of fighters, you know, they head into the UFC. After their first UFC fight, they always talk about the UFC jitters, how it was like so different fighting for the UFC, how their adrenaline or their nerves got to them a little bit. Do you seem like you're going to get bothered by the UFC jitters, or do you think that's just someone maybe with like a, a weak mindset? I don't know. We'll see. I really can't, I really can't say, man. Uh... Back in May uh, 13th, I fought for Legacy Promotions, and that was my first fight on TV. I uh, really didn't feel no jitters. I really felt at home, man, when I'm under those fights. Man, it just feels good, man. I don't, I, that's the only way I can describe it. Like, that's that's where I'm supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So I, I really can't really say until I get under there. Uh, I really, honestly, I, I really don't get much jitters uh, before fights in general. Mostly, man, I got to deal with anxiety, like, because I want to fight, like, yeah, I want to fight right then. Right, like I'm glad that I, I'm pretty sure that me and Chase are probably gonna be like one of the first fights on the card. Mm-hmm. So that's good. I, you know, I don't want to wait. You know, I want to get right to it. Whatever. So, if anything, I deal with more anxiety just from wanting to be in there than anything else. So you just you just want to get out there and scrap it out, pretty much. Oh, for sure, for sure. That's what I'm paid to do, and that's what that's what I want to do. Nice. And so uh, you seem like a pretty big light heavyweight because this fight's at uh, 205. And uh, I see it says that you're 6'4. And I, I saw you fight on that legacy card. I mean, you look like a, I think that was actually at a heavyweight fight. So, I mean, you seem yeah. like a pretty big 205er. How much weight do you have to cut? I mean, well, this is, well, I haven't cut weight uh, in some years. Probably been like three or four years since I fought at light heavyweight. Oh, wow. I've just grown over the years. I mean, my first, man, my first pro fight, I was 20 years old. Um, so I was, I was young, now I'm 27, about to be 28. I mean, you just grow into your body more. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know, man. I feel like I'm kind of in between that. Like, it, I feel like it would be a hard cut to, uh, to get to 205, but at the same time, I'm not. I'm I'm a small heavyweight. So mm-hmm. it's one of those kind of in between things. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to fight a heavyweight, man. I know they're going to talk crap when I weigh in because uh, this last fight, I think I only weighed in at 232. And, uh, you know, but that's because I'm in shape. You know, I eat a healthy diet. You know, I stay on my stuff. So, but I know the UFC is probably going to come in and try to make me probably cut uh, 205. I hope not. You know, but we'll see. Uh, I deal with heavyweight punches and all the time. I, I fought with nothing but uh, heavyweight boxers. I was in uh, Brian Jennings' uh, camp when he fought Vladimir Klitschko for the WBC uh, title. Oh, wow. So, you know, I, yeah, I, I take heavyweight punches on a daily basis. So, I mean, and that don't affect me, so uh, is, they'll see. Is this um, fight? Is this fight at two hundred five or is it at heavyweight? No, it's at heavyweight. Oh, okay. Um, see, yeah, I thought it was yeah, at two hundred five. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, dang, that's that's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah, and then they they got a chase uh, listed. This is what they got I'm listed at like six five two fifty, and my main trainer partner is six six, you know, two fifty five two sixty. So I deal with that stuff on a daily basis, and ain't nothing new. Uh, so, it's whatever, man. So, you're planning on going to use that speed? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, because I don't want to cut weight. I mean, who wants to cut weight? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you, you, you cut 35 pounds, 30, 35 pounds, you tell me how you feel. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's where I'm at with the situation. Awesome. And so what's what's the most exciting part for you about being a fighter for the UFC? Is it like, you know, you're going to be famous? Is it the, the money? Is it the highly skilled opponents? Is it that you're gonna, you could possibly travel around the world? Is it meeting awesome fighters and like maybe UFC Dana White president? Uh, the number one thing about being in the UFC, uh, man, I don't know. I, I haven't even really thought about that. I mean, uh, for me, myself... Uh, being a fighter, the goal was never to be in the UFC or whatever, be world champ. Dude, I just want to do this as a living. I want to make my living. I can't, I'm the type of person, like, I, I just don't, I, I have, like, some type of social anxiety disorder. I cannot be around people. Like, I'm, I'm not I'm not good in the office scenario. I'm just not good. I get fired from a bunch of jobs just because I'm, I'm just not a likable person. So, really, fighting is the only thing that I can really do that I can actually be successful at. So this and this is where I'm at. So there's no like overall goal. Like, hey, this is where I want to be. It's like, well, I got nothing else. Like, I'm a smart guy. I'm an intelligent guy. But you know what I'm saying? You need people skills, and that's one mm-hmm. thing I don't have. 
And so that, and that's what gets me into trouble. So fighting is the one place where I can be myself. I got to hold my tongue. I can say what I want to. I can act the way I want to. You know, and and, and that's just what makes it. That's what clicks. That's what makes it work. See? Hell yeah, that's awesome, man. And then also, you know, <clears throat> I so I know you also have a five and zero pro boxing background. Um, I I believe that you were MMA first, then you got into boxing. So tell me a little bit about your boxing background. Uh yeah, man. Actually, man, the boxing actually came about because I uh, got injured. Uh, I injured my knee uh, getting ready for uh, a fight back in two thousand twelve. Somebody hit me with a judo hip toss thing, and I injured my PCL ligament in my knee. Mm. And uh, my grappling, I just couldn't grapple. I could box all day, but I just couldn't grapple. So, you know, had to talk with people, and we just kind of, kind of stuck to boxing. And then when that came, and then uh, you know, I traveled, uh, lived in Atlanta, South Carolina, Florida, boxed all up along Florida. Uh, I, I trained with uh, Winky Wright, old trainer. I trained with Angelo Dundee, Muhammad Ali's old trainer, before mm. he passed away back in 2013. Uh, so, uh, uh, been with some real big boxing names, but that just kind of came out as a result of, you know, being injured and having to do other things. And then once that kind of stopped, I started working at this job. I was working 60, 65 hours a, a week, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I just, I, I, I couldn't train wrestling, BJJ, and boxing. I had to pick. So I was like, man, forget it. You know, I'll, I'll box. Mm -hmm. So, but but when boxing comes along, you know, if you ain't Olympic champ or you ain't got, you know, what I'm saying whatever a big amateur background, they, you know, it's hard to really get seen. Mm -hmm. And so I, I happened to actually get laid off uh, back in February from my job because the oil prices and everything dropped. So mm -hmm. In Texas, man, the oil controls our economy. I got laid off, and so I was like, dang, man, should I look for another job or? So I try to, you know, try to pursue the fighting. And at this point in time, man, MMA is the only thing that really wants to pay. Yeah. So like, you know, let's get it, you know. That's, a, that's the only thing I can do. Man, so so so, did, so you did MMA first. Then you did the, uh, you go on that boxing run. And then did, is that when you fought for Legacy after that? Yeah, I fought for Legacy after it. Yeah, because uh, my last boxing match was uh, last year, November 25th. Hmm. Yeah, and then actually I had to take a break because in that fight I injured my hand, and so uh, I was out until about February is when I got cleared by my doctor for my hand, and then I took a fight on two weeks' notice uh, against John Hill in uh, March 13th of 2016, and that was my first MMA match in, uh, what, three or four years, and I ended up submitting him in a guillotine, so... Man, that's, yeah, that's crazy, yeah, especially uh, looking at your record, you know, you have a... Uh you have uh, all your wins are by stoppage, but you have on your record it says you have four submissions. So it kind of you would kind of look at you as maybe a submission guy. But you know, watching that legacy fight, I've seen you know you had really good boxing, really great jab. You know. Oh yeah, definitely, man. I'm trying to show. I'm trying to show uh, the world just how good boxing is. You know, you get and and now in MMA, you know, you get all these guys. They want to have a movement coach, or they want to throw <laughs> kicks, or they want to do Muay Thai, they want to do karate now. Mm -hmm. You know. And MMA is about you know what what uh what martial art is the is the best one, and I'm trying to show people hey, the boxing, you know what I'm saying? Is you know, and they want to take that James Tony and Randy Couture, like oh, you know that's boxing versus MMA. No, that's not boxing versus MMA. You want to see boxing versus MMA? You put me in there against an MMA in a in an MMA fight, and that's boxing versus MMA. You teach a boxer how to check a kick, how to how to submit people, how to defend a takedown. But on the feet, all he wants to do is box and use angles and footwork. Now that's boxing versus MMA, and that's what I'm here to do. You know, I'm here to show people that, hey, box, uh, you know, y'all taking boxing for granted. That if y'all give boxers the right amount of time, uh, you know what I'm saying, to learn takedowns of friends, to learn submissions, to learn these things, learn how to take a kick, that they, that they will whoop just as many guys as anything else out there. So that's what I'm here to prove. Damn, you gave me all, you gave me goosebumps. I'm getting fired up, man. I like it. You know, um, What's the biggest like uh, difference you think? Like the biggest transformation from MMA to boxing? You you like you like for like for like for people? Yeah, like, like, like it's like MMA the fighters trying to trying to switch over. Yeah, exactly. Like is it the gloves or it's like the rounds? Man, just uh, man, I don't know. It's uh, I just think striking as a whole in MMA just doesn't get taught correctly. 
Uh, I think now that MMA blows up, you know, you get a bunch of these small gyms that just pop up everywhere. Mm-hmm. And the coaches, they really don't have that good of, like, background. They never fought. And, like, they, they went to, like, a couple boxing classes, and they think they can teach boxing or Muay Thai or kickboxing, mm-hmm. whatever it may be. And that's not the case, you know. You got to, you got to, you know, do your time in, in each one. And so the biggest thing is these MMA guys, they don't get taught correct boxing. You know, they don't get taught you know, to turn their hip or to use their back or how to throw a correct jab to where your shoulder comes up and it blocks your chin or you throw a right hand or your punch is coming back and protect your chin. You saw all these MMA guys, they, like, go take a look back, uh, uh, like the five uh, five last fights that people got knocked out. I always see MMA guys, they get knocked out and, and you see where their hands are. Their hands are always down mm-hmm. or where they're not supposed to be. Why are they, why are they not, you know? And there's things like they don't, you know, catch punches. They don't counter. They don't. You don't. You never see MMA guys split punches. Uh, Conor McGregor is really when we fought Nate Diaz. You know, you see now you see him slipping punches and doing that. And that's his amateur boxing background. But MMA striking coaches aren't teaching that because they don't teach that in Muay Thai. You don't see splits in Muay Thai. You don't see that type of stuff in uh, those type of martial arts. So when you do, like say, but MMA fighters trying to switch over the box, that's the first thing you got to learn. And then most people in MMA. Their, their stance is all wrong because they're afraid of the takedown and they don't know how to uh, distribute their weight properly. So there's a lot of things you got to change over. And then and a big thing is uh, you wear shoes in the boxing ring right now. Mm. And that might sound like a small thing, but that was a big thing. My first boxing match, I was like, dang, I got shoes on. <laughs> uh, you know, like, like that. So it's just, you know. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I thought I lost it for a second. And then, um, so yeah, there's a, so there's a big UFC fight coming up this Saturday night. It's called uh, UFC 200. Uh-huh. So I was just want to get, I want to get a few of your picks for the, for the fight. So there's DC versus, uh, John Jones for the light heavyweight title. Who do you think is going to win that fight and why? Man, I don't know, man. That's a, that's a real toss up, man. Uh, honestly, I really don't watch many John Bones Jones fights. And I really, well, I really, oh man, I, honestly, I really don't watch MMA fights to be uh, that much in general. You know, there's a particular fighters like I like the Diaz brothers. I like I like a couple fighters here and there, but for the most part, if I don't like the other fighter, then chances are I ain't, I ain't gonna uh, I ain't gonna watch it. Most of the time, if I'm gonna watch them, I'm gonna watch boxing or I'm gonna watch I'm gonna watch kickboxing like a Glory or a Lions fight. You know, I'm gonna mm-hmm. watch I'm gonna watch something like that. You know. So you're you're typically more into like the, the stand up type combat sports like kickboxing, Muay Thai, and all that. Yeah, yeah, more so, yeah. Nice. And then, uh, what's something you like to do outside of just training in MMA? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, man, really, like I said, man, I really don't have any hobbies. And, like, man, this is really a fight, man. This is really all I do, man. It's, I mean, uh, man, I watch movies. Uh, I eat a lot of food and I sleep, man. That's about it, man. If I'm not training at the gym or working, man, I don't have anything else I really can tell you that I do. What, uh, what was the best movie you've watched recently? Man, I ain't gonna lie. I got a thing for scary movies. I like that new Conjuring too, man. That, that was a good one. That was a good, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, that, that little oh, yeah. uh, scary girl in there was pretty good. Oh, yeah. And then me, I ain't gonna lie. Most of these guys, they lie because, you know, they say that they don't jump, man. I'll tell you, I jump. In all the scary movies, my girlfriend stopped me to buy a popcorn. Damn. One time I jumped so bad, I threw the freaking popcorn in the air, elbowed her in the face. <laughs> she was mad. She was like, man, we ain't even getting popcorn no more, nothing. Damn. So we don't even get nothing like that. So, oh yeah, I get into them. That's what's up. Yeah, that's how my uh, fiance. She she loves all the scary movies. We have to go. We go see him all the time. So that's cool, man. Yeah, I w- that's good that you admit it too. You know, a lot of people wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, I'll protect you, you know, if I can see it, but if there's a ghost at you, man, I can't do nothing for you. I'm gone. I'm out the door. If I can't see it, I can't protect you from it. Yeah, deuces. <laughs> but yeah, so who's a sponsor or a training partner, anyone that you, you want to give some love to, some shout outs, you know, for being there for you? Oh, yeah, definitely uh, all my gyms that I go to, like I said, HGS, SGA, uh, Gracie Bar, uh, Mainstream Boxing, you know, uh, just, uh, all, all my trainers, Gary Pena, uh, Jack Abelino, John Weibel, uh, Bobby Flores, um, Frank Adame. Uh, man, that's, a, that's about it right there. Nice. 
Well, you got any last words? Oh, man, man. I hope it's a good fight, man. Uh, man, my main thing is every fight is just go out here and just uh, impress, you know, somebody with my skills. That's, that's, that's the main thing is to put a good show on for the fans and exciting, you know. Uh, you know, hopefully we draw blood, you know, whatever blood guts is all over the place, man. That's what I want. I want one of them, them fights that nobody else wants to be in. That's, a, that's the type of fights I want to be in. I want to be in those fights that, you know, they test your will. You know, so hopefully that's that's the fight uh, that we make, you know, in all your six. So we'll, we'll see what he's made of for sure. So make sure to check out Justin Lynette take on Chase Sherman at UFC Fight Night 92. And make sure to check us out at CombatSportsCoverage.com to see who wins this epic fight. Oh.